Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Sandy Writes. And once again, I am coming out as a book holder, a book dragon rather than a book reader. I think you can see here. And this is pretty much all of my books. I mean, that shelf is a full shelf rather than what you can see in frame. And then I have a whole other shelf in my bedroom with all my childhood books, but this is pretty much it, which is, I want to say around 300 books, which pales in comparison to some of the TikTok people who are jumping on the a thousand books is a library trend and I am jealous of them every day. But as someone who's tried to get a lot better at buying books and just using my local library, so reading the ebook first and then buying books I actually love, so my collection is all books I love, rather than books that I bought on a whim and haven't read since I bought them, I'm trying to be again more mindful about my book consumption and book purchasing habits. So today, in the name of spring cleaning, it's finally time for another unhaul. I think I did one maybe the start of... Was it the start of 2023? Was it the start of 2022? It might have been a while now, but I think I did two big unhauls. And now I think it's time to finally get rid of, donate, sell books that I have now read since then and did not love. And books that I've been hanging on to to years. I've accepted that I'm probably never going to read and books that I own and probably bought on a whim that I now have no desire to read due to the author engaging in behaviour and viewpoints that don't align with my morals. In summary. So, let's get rid of some books. The first book that I'm getting rid of is The Demon in the Wood by Lee Bardugo, and this does ruin... I mean, I don't have a complete Grisha Verge collection anyway, because I'm so on the fence about whether to buy the rest of Shadow and Bone, because I have like the nice hardcover anniversary edition here and I was waiting to see if they're going to release the rest of the books like that and then like obviously Owl Crate releases the special edition books that are gorgeous so like yeah, um, I don't have a complete set anyway so I don't feel bad about getting this one this is the Darkling's origin story graphic novel I will glimpse you I will, what page will I want to glimpse you I'll glimpse you this page here it's a graphic novel I read it I enjoyed it it didn't make me care any more about the Darkling as a character and now that I've read it, I don't think I'm going to reread it either. So this one, I am getting rid of. I don't feel so bad about getting rid of a lot of these books because this one was bought when Waterstone still did the half price hardcover sale for like Boxing Day New Year. So it's not like I paid full price for it anyway. And I hope someone will love this a lot more than I do. The next one is hidden behind my art cards. These art cards here, these three are... You can't see the top one. But these three are all characters from C.G. Drews, also known as Paper Furies, The Boy Who Steals Houses trilogy. I think these are ones that might be part of the Patreon, and I love this author and this series, this little franchise going on. So these are here to stay lovely. And this one is from The Drowned Woods by Emily Lloyd-Jones as part of the pre-order campaign. I think I have a few more to put up to fill this gap, and I mostly just wanted to cover up the gap between the shelves, but it's a little ramble. The next up is The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. This is a book that I read... I enjoyed an okay amount, so I ordered like, I think I was originally going to order a special edition co um, copy, but the sprayed edges were so violently yellow rather than gold that I didn't like it. But this one I did get, it is signed by the author. So I got this one, I read it, I enjoyed it, and I thought, you know, I will probably like the sequel more than the sequel came out, or didn't come out. I read it as an advanced copy and I did not like it at all. And probably I'm going to read the third and final book just for the sake of completing the trilogy, but... I am in like the minority of people who didn't like this or fall in love with it, so it's going to go into a better home. And I think there's a lot of books here that I feel that way about. It's like, I read it, it was fine. I'm not going to reread it again, and I might not continue with it. So I think, again, someone else will love it more. I think that's all I want gone from the top shelf. That's... ooh. So, I see what I want next. Next up, I think, is going to be The Luminaries. This is the Owl Crate Special Edition. And this is a book that... <laughs> This is another book that I think I... no. I read the advanced copy of both this one and the sequel. This one, I read it. It was fine. It's a book that's very much should be for me though, so I had high hopes for the rest of the series. So I read this one. It came in the Owl Crate box, so it's something that I just had. And I loved all the items in the box as well. Read the sequel. Did not like the sequel at all, but it's a thing of like, I have high hopes for the third book. So I don't have this one, but I do have the paper copy, paper copy, paperback editions of the first two in the UK cover, which has like this border rather than the US cover, which I think I like a little bit more. 
But these ones, I got both of them, even though I don't usually like them, because... picture. I think for the special edition copies, I might try and sell them first, just because there is, I think, a slight demand for pretty books. And then they will go to my local charity shop, my local favourite book place, and we'll see what happens there. There's a lot of books on this shelf that I haven't just got round to reading yet, so it's going to be mostly untouched. But one here is Skin of the Sea. This book has sentimental value to me because it was like the first book I bought when I moved to my uni town and like saw my first indie bookstore for the first time and I got this as like a, you know, commemorative purchase. And I think of like, I think I like it, I might actually give it a try before giving it away, but I think reading the reviews, this is the one where the author might have done something but I can't guarantee, which is why I'm trying to avoid speculation. But I think I read something about this book, about the author of this book, that left like a bit of a sour taste in my mouth. So I still might give it a try, but it's a thing of like, I'll give it six months, if I don't read it within six months it's going. Because I have had it for two years now, and I've not had a desire to read it. We'll go for The Game of Love and Death as well, which is a book I got, and I think I did love. When did this come out? 2015. I think I also did read it around that time. And I just don't think I'm ever going to read it again. So it's going. Found one. To Kill a Kingdom is a book that I read as an advanced copy. I believe it was like one of my first advanced copies ever, so it has sentimental value. In 2018, I was 17. So this was like a dark little mermaid retelling, and I was going through such an intense dark fairy tale phase that I fell in love. I gave this five stars when I first read it. And then I had the advanced copy of Princess of Souls, which is set in the same universe a few years later. Did not like it at all, and looking back on this one I think, you know, I also don't like this one at this current place in my life. I did impulse buy because I think it went down to like £2 on Amazon or something ridiculous like that. So that's what- oh, sorry. That's why I have it. I'm going to get rid of it because I'm not going to read it again, and I don't have any of her other books. So it's not like I'm breaking up her set or anything. One thing I do love about hotkey books is that they have this little pie chart on the back of what you can expect from the book. And like, does it really mean anything? This one has strength, sirens, princes and hearts. Sometimes it does mean something, most of the time it's just, you know, here's what's in the book, very basic level. But I think it's fun. Next shelf is largely my Cassandra Clare collection, and as much as I don't care for these books anymore, they just had such an important place for me at whatever age I was when I started reading them and something that made me really enjoy reading, that they're all, they're pretty much all staying. And then there's a few books in here that I haven't read yet, but there's nothing I want to get rid of. The one Cassandra Clare book that I will be getting rid of though is the Lady Midnight Special Edition. I got this because, is it the Dark Artifices, this series? The Lady Midnight, Lord of Shadows, Queen of Air and Darkness. That series is like my favourite Cassandra Clare series, which is a controversial opinion, because I know the the Infernal Devices, the clockwork ones, are like the fan favourites, but these ones are my favourites. So I got this one because I loved it, and then I didn't get the rest of the series in special edition, and they're these giant ones here. But the ones I do have are still this size, but they're paperback, so they're slightly easier for me to read or reread if I want to, which I think I might one day. So this one's going. I think it was also an impulse purchase because the Waterstones heart price hardback sale. But this one, she can go to a new home. Is it things like this is the bottom shelf is just where I store my collection of books I haven't had space to put anywhere yet because it's you know it's on the ground it's not going to break my shelves. But down here, what I do think I want to get rid of are some John Green books. I have the ones I have are Looking for Alaska, Turtles All the Way Down, and The Fault in Our Stars, which are my favourite three John Green books. I haven't read all of them. And I think in my last unhaul, I finally admitted defeat and got rid of Layers Snow. And this time, I think we're going to get rid of Paper Towns and Will Grayson Will Grayson, which are like, I'm neutral about, they're all fine books. But it's a case of I'm never going to reread them, and I'm trying not to hoard things. I always say that I'm like, yeah, I'm going to keep all my books, like have a library and pass down to my future child, but I don't want kids. So like, whose child am I passing these on to? They're going to a random child that I've never met in the charity shop. I think they'll appreciate it. So my bookshelves are like, vaguely alphabetical. So down, Cassandra Clare, down here is like Stephanie Garber, John Green is the G's, Chloe Gong's in the corner as well. Here is a stack of books I haven't read yet, and 
they can all stay I think. And after I'm done filming this I can finally give them a good organise and then put all my books into order and I'm going to be so happy. Next to this side, this isn't a shelf, this is just the top of the thing. And these are all books that uh, are pretty new so we're not going to touch them. We're going to go down behind here. Flashfall. This is a book that I don't think I've ever seen anything about. This came from... I think back in the day there's like a different... I think it's like the bookworm box, there's like a different book subscription box that was UK based and I got it because I couldn't afford Owlcrate and I was like young and I wanted things. So this is one of the books that I think was in the box. I also got Replica, which I have no idea if I still have, but if I do we're getting rid of it. This is one I liked it. I think this one I might reread before getting rid of it because there's a concept in here that I think I want to play with in a book that I want to write. This was probably like my first signed book in a sense as well, but this one I think I might reread before getting rid of because, again, I haven't really thought about it in years. This is a book that has like some kind of mining element, which is why I thought like, you know, this like links up to something that I want to write, but it's going in the go away pile. I'm torn on the Skullduggery Pleasant books because the fact that the third one doesn't match up with the rest really upsets me. And I think I've only read the first three, so I think I might try to finish the series or at least ebook copies before making decisions on those ones. So they're on probation in a sense. We have two of the 100 books, which these are a friend, these are not mine. I owned the first two, I read them. Because they're very easy and simplistic to read and they're like, they're like a solid 3.5 stars. They're enjoyable and simple. I read the first two, a friend gifted me their copies of the other two, so I think I am going to read these. But after I've read them I don't imagine they'll be staying around for long. Found replica. <laughs> She's going. This is... It's got like this dual cover flipping situation. Two girls, two stories, one epic novel. So it's like dual narrated by these two characters. But like, you've got to flip it around to read the other POV, like this is upside down. And I don't know the point where they join. I don't know what this is about, I haven't thought about it since I got it. It's going. The rest of this shelf is pretty much fine, I believe. Okay, we'll go through this stack. Um, the main one here is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, which Impulse purchased again from the half, back, the half price hardback sale. Don't think I hugely wanted to read it at the time, it's more like, you know, I'll get it just in case. And now the author is going through like some Zionism and plagiarism. I'm going to research more like, oh it's rainbows. I hate that I like it. This is one where I bought it knowing I probably wasn't going to read it, and now I know more about the author and the backstory of the creation of this book, I still don't hugely want to read it. Okay, down here is like the rest of the Rick Riordan collection and the Pretty Song of Achilles editions. And I don't think there's much I want to get rid of here. Neil Gaiman Stardust, I might because I read it. It was fine. I liked the film more for like the first time ever. I think the book um, shows its age at this point in life. It shows its age a little bit. I like the film more. And I'm not collecting Neil Gaiman's works because I don't think I'll enjoy all of them. So I think we're going to hand this one over to a better home. But it's like a short little read. And it's a short little read that took me over a month to read. The next books I'll probably get rid of down here are um, Rainbow Rowell books. But I think I want to reread Fangirl and Eleanor of Park first. Because there are some elements of that that unfortunately apply to a book I'm currently writing, like vibe-wise. And I just, I want to read one last time in case there's like a nugget of inspiration in there. And then I imagine I would never want to touch them again because I don't think about them unless I'm writing this book. And then they'll go into my donate palm. Going on to the next shelves, so the very top one has my Angie Sage collection and the Schwab collection. So nothing's happening with those ones. The one below is Maggie Stivotta. I need to finish reading the Shiver series, but I think I do have pretty much all of her works except the new Call Down the Hawk book, the Ronan book, and Bravely. So I think I'm keeping them for the sake of collecting. Oh, I see something that I will get rid of. Liked, but not enough to keep. 
and conceptually it's not something I imagine I'll read again because I feel like once you know the twist it's not going to be the same to reread. And then this one, I have like the kind of ugly shiny gold special edition. That's a book that I'm probably not going to, I'm probably not going to reread the paperback copy. I reread it via audiobook recently and I adored it. But I think this is not a format I'm going to reach for. I don't have two, I don't need two copies. The other copy I got in the half price hardback sale. And also I have the first to die at the end in hardcover, so it kind of matches more in a sense. And then down at the bottom, behind my brother's Lego, we have all 13 Vampire Diaries books, which I'm probably never going to reread again. And I don't like them, but I love them. So The Book Thief, again it's a case of I'm probably never going to reread again, but it is a banger book and I love it. I've not seen the film yet though, even though it's been so many years. But the thing like, do I... it's quite a thick book as well. I'm never going to read it again, but I liked it. And I could donate it, but with the amount of times I go into a charity shop and look at the books and see this there, is it really going to go to a better home? We'll dwell on this one. And then the only other thing really on that shelf is my Heartstopper collection at the end, and they look so lovely together. But out of all the books I have, I think they're the ones I'm going to get rid of. So that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. That feels quite successful. So these are the hardbacks that I'm planning on giving to a better life. And these are the paperbacks. Every time I get rid of something, it kind of like destroys me a little bit as a hoarder who wants an 1,000 book library. But these don't need to be in my library. So I think after I finish working out what I'm going to do with God Ugly Pleasant and then finally tackling my shelf of childhood books, I will be calm and clean and fully, fully spring cleaned, I believe. But the childhood books are the ones where I'm very much like, oh my god, I have to keep for my child, my child that I'm never going to have. So I think there's a lot of sentimental value and emotional attachment that I've got to work through and will reassess at some point in life. I'm good. I really am good. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please let me know in the comments below that if you are someone who regularly, like, unhauls books, do you even unhaul books at all? Or are you on track for a thousand book library? Please let me know more. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye.